You're listening to Got Tech, the podcast with your hosts, Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. Welcome back to Got Tech, the podcast. This is episode 130 called, Should We Embrace Canva Taking Over the Eduverse? In this episode, we'll share some of our favorite things about Canva, the web-based design tool that is taking over education. We'll explain Canva Docs, Canva web pages, and 14 apps that can enhance your designs and classroom projects. This is another episode you don't want to miss. Check it out. So this is one that I've wanted to do for a little while. We just haven't got around to it because every time we go to do this episode, Canva comes out with a update. And uh, I feel like every every week it's coming out with a cool new feature and things like that. But if you are not in a Canva type person, if you do not use Canva in education, don't don't immediately just tune out of this episode because the projects that we talk about could be used in other ways such as, you know, Google Slides, Docs, things like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to explain what Canva has done to kind of help out education. I mean, it's a free tool and it does so much and it's kind of eliminating the need of purchasing a lot of different tools out there. Because, in my opinion, the functionality of Canva is its super easy to use and the functionality is just remarkable. And like I said, it's, it's a free service. Yeah, we were running a training session last week and one of the teachers in the session said, uh, oh, I've clicked into Canva before and it's, it's too complicated. I can't figure it out. I'll need to you know, come to one of your guys' sessions on it. Because we had mentioned, like, running a Canva training session for teachers, and that was the response. And it, it struck us both at the time because, uh, you know, in our heads, we didn't say this out loud, but in our heads we were like, no, it's not. Canva is not complicated to use. It's super easy. Um, you know, there. I guess it might be overwhelming. Maybe if you click on it and generate, or if you just go to, like, your your homepage for the first time because there is a lot there but I think once you actually know how to start um, a design which is what it's called in Canva um, most of the stuff is just painfully obvious to incorporate so you know I would encourage people to give it a chance and um, if you haven't used it before see what's there maybe this episode will be uh, what you need to make that happen but we're finally going to do it because we're like you said we've had a almost like a like a, a FOMO, like we don't want to miss out on publishing this this episode and then there's a bunch of cool new stuff, but we're, we're just gonna go for it and, and share what's out there right now. Yeah, so just hang on because this, this episode is gonna be jam-packed. I, I will throw two updates. We always say the updates at the beginning. Uh, there's no new updates, but just a reminder, we will be at ISTE at Philadelphia at the end of June. We'd love to meet up with people, so uh, make sure you reach out on social media. Let us know uh, when you're going to be there, and uh, we can try to have like a meetup while we're at the conference. And the other thing is, is we'll be at the NJECC conference March 7th. We'll be in the in-person day, which is on Tuesday, but there are a lot of really good uh, workshops for the remote day on March 8th as well. Uh, March 7th, we'll be doing two presentations, one with another podcaster, uh, Chris Nessie, uh, what we're going to do on that on is uh, student creation projects and how you can implement them into your curriculums and within your schools. And then our typical ed tech throwdown, which seems to be uh, one of the fan favorites when we go there. So uh, we're excited to do that as well. Uh, so those are our two updates. And uh, let's get into the bulk of the episode, which is Canva apps. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, so, you know, let's say I'll, I'll kick this off if there's anybody listening who has not tried Canva before. I'm, I'm assuming most of you have, but if, if you have not, I'll make this really quick. You can go to uh, and just give a Google uh, Canva for Education, and it will give you an educator's account. 
which is uh, completely free as of this recording in January 2023. And that free educator account lets you do lots of the stuff that people would otherwise have to pay for in Canva. Canva is often thought of as a graphic design tool. So it kind of has its origins in, in that world where if you want to design a brochure or a Christmas card or an infographic, you can head to Canva and get a real classy looking design. Um, like with a lot of these tech tools, teachers kind of jumped on it and now you're seeing Canva recognize that and incorporate things that, that meet that need. So that's really what this episode is all about is, you know, what does Canva have specifically that can help out educators? And, um, you know, one of the main things that we're seeing change here is that Canva now has something called Canva Docs, which is clearly meant to be a direct competitor or a direct alternative, let's say, to Google Docs, the thing that most teachers are using to push out assignments and worksheets. Canva has its own version of that. There's even like a Canva classroom where you can submit essentially assignments to the kids now in these Canva docs. And it works just like a Google Doc. You can, you know, you're essentially building out a worksheet. It, it looks like your typical worksheet, except with less, um, you know, there's less things like page breaks where it's page one, page two. It's sort of like this, this long extended, um, you know, extended document, but very easy to use. They have a, like a plus button at the top and the plus button is how you go about adding things to your Canva doc. You can add designs to it, and that's really, I think, what separates it from like a Google Doc is all of the design features and the embedding features you get with a Canva design, now you can do in Canva Docs. So embedding those designs, which includes embedding presentations, right? So if you imagine scrolling through a Google Doc and then all of a sudden, right in that doc is a slide deck that you can click through and navigate in a much more interactive way than you can in um, a Google Doc. And that includes, like I said, anything that can be added into Canva, you can put into this Canva Doc. Collaboration, just as easy, maybe works even better where multiple people can be editing simultaneously at the same time. You're gonna be able to do that in Canva as well. Uh, so I, I think it does everything a Google Doc can do, but just brings it to that next Canva level of, you know, being interactive and, and looking super cool in the moment. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of hyperactive hyperdocs. Right. That's that's what it kind of is. It's it's hyperdocs on steroids. Uh, you can bring in that YouTube video. I I find that to be absolutely fantastic because it gets rid of all the clutter of the YouTube site. When you uh, go to a YouTube video, it just brings it in, just the video, which is amazing, and it has students just work right there. Uh, another thing that I like is the smart search that they have. So at the top left, they have this little plus icon, and you could type in whatever you're looking for. Say you're looking for a little bunny icon. You could type in bunny icon, it's gonna pop up, and you just click on it, and it goes right into the Google Doc. I mean, that is such a easy process. They're gonna do some other things for you in the future, um, and they'll keep adding updates there, but they also have like a magic write tool, so if you wanted to get five ideas for blog posting about, I don't know, sports, baseball, you, you type that in and it will kick out five ideas for you. So there is some AI stuff coming to that as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that will be part of the education package, uh, but it will be part of the Canva package uh, in some sense. So that's one thing to look out for. Uh, before we go any further, if you do not have Canva for education in your district, we, we tell you it's free because it is. I mean, their business model is this. They want to get people introduced to it as much as they can while they're in grade school. That way they're comfortable with it. And then hopefully afterwards uh, they, they turn into paying customers. I mean, it's a smart model, especially when they're giving you a one-stop shop for everything. In this world, we are driven on presentations and media, social media, uh, things like that, designing stuff on social media. Everything's linked to social media. And you can... Uh, you can easily 
sync all your accounts to Canva so you can create your design here and it automatically will post it on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and that type of stuff. Um, some other, you know, I guess more of a recommendation. If you want to get started with this and maybe you've tried Canva before but have felt overwhelmed with it, I always encourage people to start with their templates, right? So you're going to go to Canva for education, make an account or sign in, whatever it is. And since we're talking Canva Docs, let's say you want to try making uh, a document using Canva Docs. You, there's just a, a button for it right on the home screen. You'll see it. You can click that. It'll get you started. And when you're in that doc, when you create your first one, there's a menu along the left-hand side. And you're, the first thing you're going to do is click on templates because that's the, the best way to learn and see what Canva can do is to let Canva do the work for you by using those templates. So as an educator, some of the ones that pop up under those templates are things like a survey questionnaire or a study plan, class notes, student subject journal, reading list, goal tracker, uh, meal planner, to-do list, lesson plan, uh, weekly planner. You get the idea, the list goes on, all of these things are pre-made to look great and it's it's done for you so you can just come in and kind of edit it the real great thing about templates are that it's um you know it's a it's a learning opportunity right because you're you're seeing what canva can do and often in seeing that you sort of start to figure it out yourself too so that eventually as time goes on you get better and better and can make some of these things yourself maybe one last thing about canva docs unless you've got something else is you can also automatically convert your canva docs into a canva presentation so it's a slide deck basically haven't tried it can't say exactly how that works but it's one of the things that they're uh, pushing here so i figured it'd be worth worth mentioning since we're talking about this right now but you know canva docs i mean it's so cool and I know we're gonna try to start using this to share things and push stuff out to our students and we're curious how it goes for you guys as well. I think Canva Docs is a game changer, just the functionality within there. It's really a live Google slide deck as well. Right. I mean, it brings a lot of those aspects over, uh, but I do like the continuous feature that you don't need to worry about the page breaks, especially if you're not printing it out, but it is super easy to print out as well. All right, so I wanna talk about websites. All right, we have, before this, I always used uh, Google Sites. Now I think I might uh, switch over and try websites. They have tons of templates down there that you could choose, and these aren't super complex websites. They're one-page websites. The, p the website could go forever vertically, but it's uh, it's one page, and you could do a, a lot of cool things. There are just EDU websites. There's business websites. There's portfolio websites, and that's what interests me the most uh, is the portfolio website. Uh, to keep going a little bit, there's event websites. So think about all the fundraisers that we have at our school. Well, now we can make that poster come alive through a, through a website, which is it's really really cool so I'm just clicking on one of the education websites that comes up and it just comes up like a presentation slide and what you can do is you can keep adding pages on top of it so the first slide that comes up is just your header so you would design your header maybe it's uh, Mr. Geis's class biology class or Mr. Johnson's chemistry class and, and then there's like a little paragraph that you could put there. In this class, we will talk about chemistry and the, the basic fundamentals of chemistry as we work through problems having to do with today's world. You know, something like that. And then after that, you simply uh, just add a page. And what that does is it connects it to the top page. So you're building a page or a website one page at a time but they have all these templates for you for each page. And then under that, they have all these layouts. So if you want an image on the left side and a text on the right, you could easily do that. If you want like a collage, you could do that. And it's a, it's a very quick drag and drop using frames. Uh, there's also frames behind. So if you wanted to put a big picture and then you wanted to embed text into that picture, that is a layout as well. 
And then they have something called styles, which allows you to bring in your brand colors. So Nick and I have created a couple different brand kits. We have one for our podcast. We have one for our, our student uh, publications network, which includes podcasts and blogs and artwork and photos and things like that. And each one of those uh, podcasts within that network has their own branding colors. So we have a couple different branding sets in there. And then all you have to do once you designed your web page over to the right is hit your branding colors and it automatically changes all the colors and filters and everything to meet your brand. That right there is super cool and super efficient. I just made a three part website while talking <laughs> where it has Nick's chemistry class. It has an introductory paragraph. And then I put a chem picture in the next section as the background with three of your units, imaginary units on top. And then at the bottom, I put resources for the class and I put some headers there, which I can connect to some of our, our daily lessons or your daily lessons. So really, I just made you a web page in three minutes. Wow, thanks, man. I was actually just having trouble with my Google site, making this even more appealing to me. Other stuff you can do with their websites, like they've got a bunch of choice board templates under websites, which is unique. But if you think about it, I mean, a choice board, as you would usually make it on a Google Doc, it's really just a collection of links, most likely. And why not call that a website? And they've got some templates for choice boards that would eventually be published as these Canva websites that are really neat looking. It's going to give you a different vibe than your typical choice board if you're Students are getting sick of choice boards, that typical, like, say, three by three, you know, that three by three grid. Make one of these things. When you go to publish, just so everybody knows, this is not like something Canva is calling a website in air quotes, but it's actually just like a shared Canva image. It's actually a published site. So when you click on publish, it's going to give you all the typical website publishing options, like on a mobile device, how's it going to get resized? You can publish it to a free Canva domain. So I'm not sure what that looks like yet, but I'm guessing it's canva.com slash something that it chooses. You can, through Canva, buy your own domain name, just like you would do if you were paying for your, your own like WordPress site or something else. You can do that. You can also use an existing domain that you are paying for through another service. Point being, these are actual websites that get published online. So that's web pages and that's Canva Docs. And to wrap it up, we're going to list out 14 different apps, Canva apps. When you start a design in Canva, there's lots of different edit options like text boxes and images and all sorts of fancy stuff. One of those often ignored options are apps. Yeah, I mean, apps are huge. I didn't even know they were there until most recently. And there's a whole bunch of different things that will enhance your experience on Canva and also enhance the, the student experience as well. So really excited getting into these. But before we get into these, we also have to mention we deliberately left out some of the functionality of Canva. You can make videos. Uh, you could work with audio. You could edit the audio and videos. Uh, things like that in Canva now. So we're not downplaying those uh, functionality pieces. But we just want to really talk about the things that, you know, aren't on the front page and where you can find them and how you could use them in your educational lessons and to really enhance the lesson. So Nick, why don't you start us off with the, the first one? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we're kind of just focusing this on the these elements, but all that other stuff is there too. As far as the apps go, one of the, the cooler ones is called Text to Image. And this is actually the one that got the, the idea for this whole episode rolling. You showed me this uh, a couple days ago. Um, text to Image, it's almost like these, uh, you know, these AI things that are coming out where you can go to a website and type in a description of whatever you want to see. And it will basically draw that for you. The, the AI creates the art, if, if you want to call it art depending on how you feel about it. And you can then pretty much add that image into your design. Well, Canva has one of these things built in as the text to image app. And it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is awesome. I mean, I'll say why it's awesome. And then I'll give another reason why it's awesome. It's awesome because you have someone like me that cannot draw a lick. 
you know, Nick is very good at drawing vegetables and things like that. <laughs> and then <laughs> I can't, I can't draw a stick figure, but I can type in, even that is pretty subpar too. I could type in, uh, to this text to image editor, uh, what I typed in a person's name. Yeah. We'll leave the person's name out of it. Um, writing a grizzly bear looking for a unicorn in Monet style. So Monet, the artist uh, style. And I thought it did a pretty nice job doing that, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing I will say, which makes this even better. I, I was searching for a more glorified uh, term than better, but it's better. It's better. It is better. Is that the person's name I put in was a politician riding a grizzly bear looking for a unicorn in Monet style. And it came up as a, it triggered a, a security thing just saying that uh, this will not go through because it's afraid that it might be offensive or, or be used in the wrong way. So it's a nice little. I guess buffer and added layer of security when your students are working with it, which I thought was really, really cool. Yeah, it's it's great. It's and it opens up the door, like you said, to a lot of those kids that might not be able to draw something themselves and that leads to frustration and not trying super hard and now they've got an option. Another cool app here was called Icon Duck. Icon Duck will bring in just like I mean, I think it was 250,000 different icons, so I just tried typing in, typing in like chemical reactions and it gave me a ton of cool stuff. I use little icons like this all the time because every, you know, every time I start a, a unit, uh, I make sure that each, you know, all the presentations or videos and worksheets are all themed with the same little representative icon somewhere on that, that page just to help the kids navigate and stay organized. And typically I go to a, a website called The Noun Project for these things, and it's great. I love The Noun Project, but guess what? Just like everything else we're seeing, that is now right in Canva, uh, just with Icon Duck. So you can you can go in here and pull in lots of neat little uh, like clip art style icons and and use them, download them to put them into any other format you might want. And um, yeah, it's super cool. There's lots of stuff there. Yeah. So when this is is making me reflect on what we do when we identify ed tech tools that we really, really like. When we're going to adopt an ed tech tool, we want it to be cost effective. Free is pretty cost effective. We want it to be versatile. This is like, going back to a previous episode, Canva is like the ultimate uh, multi-use tool or what do we call it? Um, Swiss Army knife right. tool. Right. Uh, it, it's that. and. And now we're adding a one-stop shop feature to it. And it's just amazing. So the next one, and this craze has kind of come and gone, but you still see them are Bitmojis. You can make your Bitmoji right in there uh, and add your Bitmoji to all your templates if you want. And this could be part of your branding package. Uh, Nick and I have talked in previous episodes about how important it is for teachers to build their brand within their own classroom. And the reason why this is important is students see it as being very professional, brings credibility, it, it, it shows confidence and things like that. Well, now you're able to do that very easily in here, either by making your Bitmoji or bringing your Bitmoji in. But also, there's another thing in there, if you wanna build your own, Right inside Canva, there's one called Char uh, Character Builder, which is an avatar create creator within Canva. And, you know, that is another way of being able to, you know, kind of bring a little personalization into your classroom. Another thing I would use Canva Builder for is have the students build their own avatars and uh, have it very basic at the beginning. And then as you gamify your classroom a little bit. Maybe if they earn like 30 points or a team earns 30 points, you could tell them, okay, now you can add a hat or some type of accessory to your avatar. I would have every kid make their own avatar, put it into one of the, the presentation modes, and then um, 
any time that you want to do any type of audio in Canva, uh, you want them to respond to a question or anything like that, they could just put a little icon next to their avatar and, and hook an audio file, whether it's using Moat, which is a feedback tool that I always talk about. You could bring that into it and uh, they can make little moats that anywhere across the Chrome browser uh, and just add that right next to um, their avatar in Canva. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or we're, you know, we're start our semester one is ending and semester two is starting. So that means we're going to see a new group of students coming up in a class that you and I co-teach together rather than the typical first day stuff, right? Where you have kids fill out a note card or do all that, you know, the classic first day things. Why not have them create an avatar that summarizes themselves using the character builder? And maybe they have to include like three pictures next to the avatar that kind of describes them. So you're bringing in like a different take on the same information that's a little more up to date, a little more creative and lets the kids have some fun with it. So that's the character builder. We're, we've got a couple things on here, maybe I'll cover two at once that are gonna bring in some additional images. One of them is an app called Pexels and the other one is called Pixabay. You might recognize these because I'm pretty sure at least Pixabay has it you know, like its own outside website that I'm guessing Canva just linked up to. It's really just stock images. So if you're looking for a picture of a classroom to use as a background image on a slide and you don't like the ones that Canva has, you can go to some of these third-party apps like Pexels or Pixabay and search for classroom and see what they have to offer. So this just really cuts out an extra step for you of going to these websites in a separate tab now you can do it all straight through Canva. So, you know, for me, I'm doing a lot of this type of thing. This is just a really excellent time saver. And it's nice to know that these uh, apps are being built in. I forget which one it is. I'm going to have to take a look. But if you go to Pixabay or Pexels, uh, one of them allows you to upload the image. Like if you go there, even without making an account, it allows you to take it over to Canva and just, uh, you know, work on the image. Yeah. Uh, automatically which is pretty cool it's cool to see these different um, connections to canva with these other other uh, tools and websites and things like that so I, I like both of those you could do you could have your students pick their favorite uh, quote and put a background to it and have them help you decorate your classroom I've seen uh, quote quote walls and things like that where where teachers have them have students pick their their favorite quotes and put it on a quote wall and you know every day they they kind of go through a different quote and what it means and the person kind of explains you know why it's one of their favorite quotes that's things cool. like that yeah there are several different uses of pictures but that's one of the favorite ones all right so the next one is one that we've talked about several times uh, in other episodes but it's kind of one that we just want to let you know that was there because I went out and used a different platform when I could have just stayed in Canva, and that's a QR code generator. So they do have an app. Now when you're making your poster, you could easily just go into the apps on the bottom left of your Canvas screen. You can click on QR code generator, generate that QR code, and then upload it to any type of presentation, doc, uh, poster, whatever it is that you're you're working on. So I know for you and I, this makes those QR scavenger hunts, you know, take a lot less time because we used to have to go to that third party app, put in, you know, a new QR code for each one of the stops. And now we can just do that right within Canva, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Just again, cut out the middleman, just like with Pexels and Pixabay. The next one, or the next app we found is along a similar theme. Uh, Giphy is probably, I shouldn't say it's the biggest. I don't know what the biggest is, but certainly Giphy is one of the most well-known, uh, I don't know, storage websites for, for GIFs. And there is an app for Giphy. So if you want to pull in a GIF from Giphy.com to your Canva design, you can now do that. This is really cool because in Canva designs, the GIFs move. You can actually see them play. You can download them in that GIF format. So if there's a GIF you like, but you want to add to it and kind of make it your own, now you can do that too. And this is obviously great for all kinds of stuff. Even if it's just a, you know, maybe a, a GIF creation assignment that you can do in Canva, 
This makes it possible to, to bring in pre-made ones that the kids can edit or look at. And also just for you, if you wanna like embed some GIFs in your a presentation that you're putting together. Now you can do that much, much faster. I'm going to take this a step further. Nick earlier mentioned that there's a Canva classroom. So if you have students turning in their group project or their individual project to you using Canva classroom, now you could use Giphy to give them that digital sticker or feedback, you know, on how they did, you know, just a little extra something at the top that goes along with their feedback that you're giving them. And you could also use the next one to do that too, and that's called Sty Pop. Sti 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 Pop? Pop? Yeah, I don't Sti know. Pop? Like Sticker Pop? <laughs> Hip I don't Hop? Know. Hip Hop Anonymous? <laughs> you give him all the easy ones. Hopefully I didn't just date myself, but I probably did. Well, that doesn't matter. Anybody who gets the reference, we, we like that person. Yeah, you're, you're good with us. So uh, the other thing you could do is just download these digital stickers, throw them in your Google Keep, uh, if you're familiar with Google Keep, it's a it's a add-on to you know the whole G Suite uh, app section, and with uh, Google Keep, it allows you to when you have a Google Doc open that maybe a student hands in, you could easily uh, access your your Google Keep and just drag open or over those stickers, uh, which is another good use for them. So that is uh, Stipop, Stipop, uh, the app there, which is stickers to go along with those GIFs. Another one is called Bulk Create, and I think this could actually be uh, have pretty far-reaching implications from like an administrative standpoint, where you want to make a whole bunch of the same design over and over and over again, just with say uh, different student names in like a name field or student pictures even. Uh, because with bulk create, if you have a bunch of data in a CSV file, uh, like an Excel spreadsheet, you can import that file and have the data in the different columns populate different text boxes uh, over and over and over again to create the same repetitive image. My first thought was like student ID badges or some type of a, you know, a card that is, is unique to different students. You just design that card one time, use the bulk create app to then pull in the data, and Canva will, will automatically make, you know, let's say there's 500 kids on a list in an Excel file, it's automatically gonna make those 500 separate images and just import the data from this sheet. I don't know how this type of work is typically done for the design of like a school ID badge. I'm sure if some company handles it, but maybe now some of that stuff can be done in-house. And uh, you know, on a classroom scale, I haven't really thought it through yet, but that is a pretty cool feature. Yeah, I, I definitely want to play around with this one because to me it kind of almost sounds like a mail merge. Right. Like what if you can make your labels, personalized labels, or you know, if you're doing an email to parents and you want to make that email look a little bit more like a, an announcement rather than an email, Maybe you could use the CSV file to personalize right. all those and, and make them, print them out, and, and, and share them. So I think Bulk Create has a lot of potential. I just don't know enough about it. I haven't played around with it, but I, sh I really, really want to. So the next one is Charts. So there's an app called Charts. Uh, what's really cool about Canva is one of the recent updates if you would take a Google Sheet and you would copy the data from the Google Sheet, when you used to bring that over, uh, the formatting was pretty stagnant, meaning whatever you brought over couldn't be moved, it couldn't be changed. But now when you hit uh, Control C from your Google Doc and then Control V into a Canva Doc, it makes that table kind of live where you could still format it and change it a little bit, which is really, really cool. Uh, with charts, you can import data, or you can actually pick a chart and and add the data right there. So that's pretty cool. You can make line graphs, pie charts, uh, and like I said, bring in or create data right there. Enter the data right there, and it's going to make a pretty good-looking chart, depending on what style that you want. 
Yeah, I mean, you can get charts like this made a lot of places, but as with most things in Canva, they, they look fantastic. And being able to just type in the numbers yourself or import the information from a spreadsheet makes it super easy. The next app is, is called YouTube, and there's not much to say here besides you can embed a YouTube video right in your design. The most you know easy to understand application of this would be if you're working on a presentation slide deck in Canva, which they have lots of those. Now you can put a YouTube video straight in there so you can play that YouTube video while presenting. It's really seamless. I tested one earlier and it was, you know, there was almost no lag in between importing the video, presenting the presentation and in that present mode, when you click play, it starts playing immediately faster even than an embedded YouTube video in like a Google slide deck. So it's just a really nice thing to know that it's there. Yeah, one thing I really like about this is how clean it looks. It gets rid of all the noise of the YouTube site. It just brings in the video, right? Uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, just so you know, and this is uh, another one, you can connect your Google Drive and access all your images, videos, and stuff from your Google Drive and bring it right into Canva. And then I guess uh, that brings us up to our last one, which I'll let you uh, kind of do it because I see an example. Yeah, number 14 is called Smart Mockups. It's, uh, if you've got an image, like uh, you can picture a logo or some type of a, a cover art that you might have, if you use Smart Mockups, it's gonna automatically take that image and put it on a variety of different products so you can see what that design would look like on a t-shirt. So it's gonna you know, overlay it on an actual picture, like a photo. Um, of somebody wearing a t-shirt now that shirt has your image on there or a book and it shows that book sitting on like a little shelf or a cell phone if it was the background to an app and it's going to just help give you a sense of how that picture is going to look used in all these different formats you know we, we teach a class where we do this type of thing where students are designing stuff to get posted online or to be used in product creation so this is going to be great for that because kids can design a logo and then get a sense of how it's going to look on all these different uh, formats, I guess you could say, or uses without actually printing a shirt or without actually designing the phone app. They can, they can see it before any of that happens. Yeah, one thing I, I would suggest using this for or thinking about using this for is we don't always have to print out the shirts. We don't always have to make the tablet cover image or anything like that but you can use it as like a prototype almost. Uh, so I know we have a class in this building that is a lot like uh, Shark Tank. One of their projects is a lot like Shark Tank. Well, this is a great way to kind of make a prototype come to live life, uh, you know, without actually having to go through and making it. The other thing I can think of is, all right, so you make a, a really cool book cover or a really cool note book cover or t-shirt well maybe the prices make sense because you can do uh printing through canva maybe it makes sense to do a fundraiser for you know your club or whatever based on a design that you have so I, I would strongly encourage that as well like you know once again you're making the design you don't need a company to charge you fifty dollars for a template design when you're making it and then Maybe your prototype is is printed out through Canva, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just used to show what it might look like so you could get a couple more sales uh, on your pre-orders uh, just to, to bring it to life a little bit. Yeah, or yeah, if you're teaching that, that business class, like you said, this is a, a really smart way to prepare that business-style presentation where you're going to sell your product to people and... Now you can sell your stuff without actually having all of these things physically created. So that's the last one and, and one of my favorites because it's a pretty unique and cool thing. That's also 14 different apps that Canva has along with Canva Docs, Canva web pages, tons of great stuff. And uh, I think that wraps it up, right? Yeah, I'll just throw this out. We, we just talked about usages and apps today, use cases. We didn't talk about any of the skills of Canva and some of the cool little fine increments I can't say it. Little fine details. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say it again, but little fine details that you can, uh, these little skills that you can develop within Canva. And I know 
Nick kind of mentioned it earlier, they have every type of video that you need to get your students started. If you're not familiar with Canva, they have it. In the top of Canva, there's like a university almost up there. Under the education uh, tab, there's a teachers and schools uh, tab. There's a student tab. If you go under that student tab, it will show you how to use, or it will show, they're like two minute clips that show your students how to use Canva. So don't be afraid of it. You only need to be one step ahead of them, and you could use that to do it. There's also a teach with Canva, so there's an other resource page where it allows you to search and edit templates. It shows uh, engagement with student presentations, flip learning with talking presentations, daily uh, agendas, and some of the other things that you could use Canva for. It shows you exactly how to do it in a step-to-step -step video guide that's usually under three minutes. So definitely check those out. Uh, that's going to wrap up this episode, which is 1.30. Uh, and this was all about Canva. We're, we're becoming big, big fans of Canva. We think other educators could too, especially with it being so accessible to them, being free. You're able to upload it for your entire K through 12 district. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But if you like the content that we put out today, please check us out over at gottech.com. You could also check us out at all the podcast uh, major players, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. Check our YouTube channel out. All this stuff is in the show notes. Connect with us on Twitter at Nick Got Tech, Geist Got Tech, or at We Got Tech, as well as our Facebook group. Thanks for listening to Got Tech, the podcast. Remember to subscribe to our show and follow us at We Got Tech on Twitter so you can stay up to date with the latest episode releases, blog posts, product reviews, and PD announcements. You can also follow Geist and I individually at Geist Got Tech and at Nick Got Tech on Twitter or on Instagram at Nick Got Tech. Finally, remember to check out our website, gottech.com, where we post all our episodes, articles, and resources available to you for free. Until next time.